The 40-plus page indictment cites Trump's own staffers. The testimony is from his own staffers, even his own former lawyers. It details how the former president knew he was in possession of documents he was not authorized to have that detailed sensitive national security matters. It breaks down the links to which Donald Trump went to mislead the FBI and even his own attorneys about the existence of these documents after receiving a subpoena from the grand jury allegedly coordinating with his valet, a.k.a. personal aide. It creates a timeline of events that culminated in the infamous FBI search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago last year. As the indictment lays out, the documents in Trump's possession originated from a host of federal agencies, including the CIA and the Department of Defense. Folks, this is not some clerical offense, a bureaucratic misstep. This isn't about random papers. This is a serious violation of the rules about how documents related to our national security are handled. It matters. It is these rules that keep the people serving our country safe, and it is the violation of these very rules that can get those same people killed. According to the indictment, the classified documents Trump stored in his boxes included information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the United States and foreign countries, United States nuclear programs, potential vulnerabilities of the United States and its allies to military attack, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. The former president took no care to secure this sensitive information, stacking the documents on a, a ballroom stage, then in a random bathroom at Mar-a-Lago. Americans, including the people, maybe even especially the folks who voted for Donald Trump, believing that he could be trusted to guard the nation's secrets, they deserve better. This is why elections matter, folks. This is why voting matters. This is why the people's ability to participate in the electoral process is critical and why the recent Supreme Court decision in Allen versus Milligan is another monumental development that we must discuss. Ten years after the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act in Shelby v. Holder, Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which forbids election structures that result in discrimination on the basis of race, it is the last defense voting rights advocates have. Well, despite defying expectations and despite what we all, the assumptions folks had, the court, the Supreme Court, found that Alabama's voting maps disenfranchised black voters by packing them into one district, diluting their voting power. This ruling now gives Alabama the, sec the chance for a second black majority district, and its impact is not stopping at the Alabama state line. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Democratic Congresswoman Terry Sewell, the lady from Alabama. Welcome to you, Congresswoman. <laughs> um, let's start with the Trump indictment first, because you are someone who sits on the Armed Services Committee. You receive classified briefings. You are well versed on some of the most you know, sensitive uh, conversations happening at the highest levels of our country. What was your reaction to the extent of the defense documents that the former president possessed? You know, these allegations, Simone, are serious. Uh, no one is above the law, and uh, our president is not above the law, nor any former president above the law. So I think this is really important, not only to make to the rule of law, but it, especially to our national security. Um, as you stated, I was formerly on the Intelligence Committee, the House Intel Committee, for eight years, and um, privy to the same briefing that the president would get on a daily basis. And I can tell you that the the uh, allegations against former tr uh, President Trump are very serious. And if true, he has definitely violated our uh, national security and obstructed justice. And so, you know, I think that we have to let this process play out. I don't want any, uh, in, in any way, to um, s suggest that uh, he's guilty. Um, but the evidence against him is pretty powerful, and these allegations are very, very serious. So, Congresswoman, given that, then, I'm struggling with how Speaker McCarthy uh, responded after the indictment. He vowed to, quote, that House Republicans will hold this brazen weaponization of power accountable. This weaponization of power is something we continue to hear. There's even a weaponization uh, committee uh, in this uh, current Congress. 
Are you concerned about your Republican colleagues, their vibrato, uh, but also their seemingly willingness to muck up a potential, muck up investigations that are happening in other branches of the government? Well, you know, Simone, you're, you're spot on. You know, I think that for my Republican colleagues to politicize this indictment, an indictment that goes to the very heart of our national defense, our national security, keeping us safe as a, as a nation, and more importantly, or just as important, the men and women who every day fight on the front lines and who do our intel, intelligence uh, investigations and make sure that we are, are, are safe. And so, you know, you know, the fact that we're politicizing this, um, I'm not surprised that my Republican colleagues are politicizing this indictment. I'm just very, very disappointed. And I think that this is yet another reason why representation does matter. Congresswoman, there are House Republicans who have minimized the severity of the charges, um, yet they know the gravity of them and the protocols for handling the documents. But then you've got, you know, every, regular folks across the country, people in your district, I'm sure, who are wondering, is this even really that serious? What do you say to those folks? Well, I say that a 37 uh, account of indictment against the former president is very serious. When you um, take uh, what Jack Smith said with respect to the gravity and the extent of uh, the information that was uh, that he had in his possession, the carelessness by which he um, um, kept those uh, those documents, and when you consider the fact that nobody is above the law, especially um, those who are elected, like the president. I want to move to the historic uh, voting rights decision by the Supreme Court earlier this week. The shape of your district, Alabama 7th, it was actually established in 1992. It is the state's currently only majority black uh, district. Uh, and I would like to note that this district was established more than 100 years post Reconstruction. Um, under the provisions of the Voting Rights Act. So the new decision now paves the way for a potential second majority black district in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, talk about the impact uh, of that and just your reaction when you heard the decision. You know, Simone, uh, this is a historic victory, a great victory, not just for Alabama's black voters, but for minority voters across this country, and a victory for democracy itself. As you said, it goes, it, it, this particular decision actually upholds the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and Section 2 in particular. We were really concerned, those of us who were at the oral argument, uh, that this, uh, that the Supreme Court would use this as an opportunity to further gut the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We know that we're on the cusp or the eve of the 10th anniversary of the Shelby versus Holder decision, and that decision, the Shelby decision, was a decision that really gutted uh, federal oversight and found unconstitutional Section 4. As you know, I have been uh, carrying the seminal piece of legislation, the John Robert Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, that would fully restore the protections, all of the protections of the voting of the VRA. And so this win in Milligan case is huge. It means that Alabama must redraw its maps. It also means that uh, that st other states and other uh, maps, whether they're congressional or state legislature maps or even county commission maps, cannot dilute the power of black voters. And if they do, if those maps do, they should be redrawn to fall in line with the law. And so the reason why I guess I'm smiling from ear to ear uh, is because I feel like minority voters uh, in, across this nation um, won on this decision, and the Supreme Court followed the law. They upheld the Voting Rights Act of 1965, uh, you know, Section 2. I, and so, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you make a very um, important point. There are actually dozens of Section 2 cases that are still unfolding across the country. Um, and as you just said, this case could lead to similar rulings in those instances. Uh, if they do, th these maps will need to be redrawn prior to 2024 elections. And Cook Political Report, in response to the Supreme Court ruling, shifted actually four House races from lean R to toss up, and one district from toss up to lean D for Democrat. Um, the implications of a, uh, of a Democratic House of Representatives here, potential for that in 2024, how can Democrats capitalize on this momentum and deliver a House majority? 
It does mean uh, that elections do matter and the elections, uh, the results of elections could be changed by this. But we must remember this is not about Democrats and Republicans. This is about minority representation, fair representation. And this decision will reverberate around this nation when it comes to making sure that um, minority voters, African American voters in the case of Alabama, that their power is not diluted and that they have an opportunity to elect candidates of their choice, that state legislatures cannot redraw maps such that um, that, that the candidates that are, that are available for them to vote on are, are candidates that would not represent their best interests. So I think this has huge implications uh, for this nation. And like I said, it's not, uh, it's not about me, it's not about Alabama uh, alone, and it's not about Republican or Democrat. It's about what's fair. And what's fair, Simone, is that um, African-American voters, minority voters across this nation, their power, their voting power should not be diluted. And, you know, mm. I know that John Lewis and those foot soldiers that marched and bled and, and um, died, uh, you know, um, uh, in my hometown of Selma, Alabama, in order for there to be an equal voice in our democracy, are smiling uh, at this decision. Um, you know, it's a major decision and a major win for minority voters across this nation. In America, the people still have the power. Congresswoman Terry Sewell, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Simone.